March 15th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Numbers chapters 31 and 32 from the Old Testament The Lord spoke to Moses Exact vengeance for the Israelites on the Midianites. After that you will be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, Arm men from among you for the war, to attack the Midianites and to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. You must send to the battle a thousand men from every tribe throughout all the tribes of Israel. So a thousand from every tribe, twelve thousand armed for battle in all, were provided out of the thousands of Israel. So Moses sent them to war, one thousand from every tribe, with Phinehas son of Eleazar the priest, who was in charge of the holy articles and the signal trumpets. They fought against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses, and they killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian in addition to those slain, Evi, Recham, Zer, Hur, and Reba, five Midianite kings. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. The Israelites took the women of Midian captive along with their little ones and took all their herds, all their flocks, and all their goods as plunder. They burned all their towns where they lived and all their encampments. They took all the plunder and all the spoils, both people and animals. They brought the captives and the spoils and the plunder to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to the Israelite community, to the camp on the plains of Moab along the Jordan River across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went out to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was furious with the officers of the army, the commanders over thousands and commanders over hundreds, who had come from service in the war. Moses said to them, Have you allowed all the women to live? Look, these people through the council of Balaam caused the Israelites to act treacherously against the Lord in the matter of Peor, which resulted in the plague among the community of the Lord. Now therefore kill every boy and kill every woman who has had sexual intercourse with a man. But all the young women who have not had sexual intercourse with a man will be yours. Any of you who has killed anyone or touched any of the dead remain outside the camp for seven days. Purify yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. You must purify each garment and everything that is made of skin everything made of goat's hair and everything made of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men of war who had gone into the battle, This is the ordinance of the law that the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that may stand the fire you are to pass through the fire, and it will be ceremonially clean. But it must still be purified with the water of purification. Anything that cannot withstand the fire, you must pass through the water. You must wash your clothes on the seventh day, and you will be ceremonially clean, and afterward you may enter the camp. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest and all the family leaders of the community take the sum of the plunder that was captured, both people and animals, divide the plunder into two parts. One for those who took part in the war, who went out to battle, and the other for all the community. You must exact a tribute for the Lord from the fighting men who went out to battle. One life out of five hundred from the people, the cattle, and from the donkeys and the sheep. You are to take it from their half share and give it to Eleazar the priest for a raised offering to the Lord. From the Israelites' half share you are to take one portion out of fifty of the people, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep from every kind of animal, and you are to give them to the Levites, who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The spoil that remained of the plunder which the fighting men had gathered was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 young women who had never had sexual intercourse with a man. The half portion of those who went to war numbered 337,500 sheep. The Lord's tribute from the sheep was 675. 
the cattle numbered 36,000. The Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The people were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 32 people. So Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's raised offering, to Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. From the Israelites' half share that Moses had separated from the fighting men, there were 337,500 sheep from the portion belonging to the community, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 people. From the Israelites' share, Moses took one of every 50 people and animals and gave them to the Levites who were responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over the thousands of the army, the commanders over thousands and the commanders over hundreds, approached Moses and said to him, Your servants have taken account of the men who were in battle, who were under your authority, and not one is missing. So we have brought as an offering for the Lord what each man found, gold ornaments, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold from them, all of it in the form of ornaments. All the gold of the offering they offered up to the Lord from the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds weighed 16,750 shekels. Each soldier had taken plunder for himself. So Moses and Eleazar the priest received the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord. Now the Reubenites and the Gadites possessed a very large number of cattle. When they saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were ideal for cattle, the Gadites and the Reubenites came and addressed Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the leaders of the community. They said, Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eliela, Sabam, Nebo, and beyond, the land that the Lord subdued before the community of Israel is ideal for cattle, and your servants have cattle. So they said, If we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants for our inheritance. Do not have us cross the Jordan River. Moses said to the Gadites and the Reubenites, Must your brothers go to war while you remain here? Why do you frustrate the intent of the Israelites to cross over into the land which the Lord has given them? Your fathers did the same thing when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. When they went up to the Eshkol Valley and saw the land, they frustrated the intent of the Israelites so that they did not enter the land that the Lord had given them. So the anger of the Lord was kindled that day and he swore, because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of the men twenty years old and upward who came from Egypt will see the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, except Caleb, son of Jephaniah the Kenzanite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. So the Lord's anger was kindled against the Israelites, and he made them wander in the wilderness for forty years, until all that generation that had done wickedly before the Lord was finished. Now look, you are standing in your father's place, a brood of sinners, to increase still further the fierce wrath of the Lord against the Israelites. For if you turn away from following him, he will once again abandon them in the wilderness, and you will be the reason for their destruction." Then they came very close to him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our flocks and cities for our families. But we will maintain ourselves in armed readiness and go before the Israelites until whenever we have brought them to their place. Our descendants will be living in four to five towns as a protection against the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until every Israelite has his inheritance. For we will not accept any inheritance on the other side of the Jordan River and beyond, because our inheritance has come to us on this eastern side of the Jordan. Then Moses replied, 
If you will do this thing, and if you will arm yourselves for battle before the Lord, and if all your armed men cross the Jordan before the Lord until he drives out his enemies from his presence, and the land is subdued before the Lord, then afterward you may return and be free of your obligation to the Lord and to Israel. This land will then be your possession in the Lord's sight. But if you do not do this, then look, you will have sinned against the Lord and know that your sin will find you out. So build cities for your descendants and pens for your sheep, but do what you have said you would do. So the Gadites and the Reubenites replied to Moses, Your servants will do as my Lord commands. Our children, our wives, our flocks, and all our livestock will be there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants will cross over, every man armed for war, to do battle in the Lord's presence, just as my Lord says. So Moses gave orders about them to Eleazar the priest, to Joshua son of Nun, and to the heads of the families of the Israelite tribes. Moses said to them, If the Gadites and the Reubenites cross the Jordan with you, each one equipped for battle in the Lord's presence, and you conquer the land, then you must allot them the territory of Gilead as their possession. But if they do not cross over with you armed, they must receive possessions among you in Canaan. Then the Gadites and the Reubenites answered, Your servants will do what the Lord has spoken. We will cross armed in the Lord's presence into the land of Canaan, and then the possessions of our inheritance that we inherit will be ours on this side of the Jordan River. So Moses gave to the Gadites, the Reubenites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, the realm of King Sihon of the Amorites, and the realm of King Og of Bashan, the entire land with its cities and the territory surrounding them. The Gadites rebuilt Dibon, Adaroth, Aurora, Adaroth Shofan, Jazer, Jogbaha, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran as fortified cities and constructed pens for their flocks. The Reubenites rebuilt Heshbon, Eliela, Kiriatham, Nebo, Balmion, with a change of name, and Sibma. They renamed the cities they built. The descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, took it, and dispossessed the Amorites who were in it. So Moses gave Gilead to Machir, son of Manasseh, and he lived there. Now Jair, son of Manasseh, went and captured their small towns and named them Havoth Jair. Then Nobah went and captured Kenoth and its villages and called it Nobah after his own name. God, I always uh, smirk a little bit when it says the Reubenites rebuilt Heshbon, Eliela, Kiriatham, Nebo, Baal, Meon with a change of name. <laughs> I hope they changed the name, be named after a god, and they were just told to go in there and slaughter all those people because they were worshiping uh, Baal and also enticing the Israelites to do so as well. Um, yeah, change the name. Probably a good thing. It never fails to amaze me how quick you are to protect us from things that are getting us in trouble or could potentially get us into trouble. And the worship of Baal, probably one of the more horrific so called gods out there child sacrifice, homosexual orgies, worshiping of nature over a god or the god. No wonder you wanted the Israelites away from that. And the fact that some of the Israelite men were getting enticed by these women who were having sex with them <laughs> and then going over there and worshiping ball instead of instead of you it's no wonder that you wanted them taken out I think about all the things in my life that I know that you have taken out um, some of them I have thrown a fit about other ones I rejoiced at and I'm sure there's just as many or if not more that I don't even know that you rescued me from 
God, I know that throughout all of this that you are completely in control of everything. You are sovereign not only over everything, but over every last detail of our individual lives, which is amazing to me that you want such an intimate relationship with us, that you're willing to go before me throughout the day and take out the possibility of situations that I could get myself in trouble with. Um, that you have promised that you will always give me a way out of those situations. How amazing is that? That there is never ever a dead end with you, that you will always offer us an opportunity to make the right choice. I, I realize sometimes I make the wrong choice, but just how how in depth that caring is that you would always give us an opportunity to find our way out of those situations. God, today I just thank you so much for your faithfulness. That even while I throw tantrums and get mad at you for doing what's best for me and doubt your plans that you have for me, you are still intentional with your love for me. You're still intentional with the relationship that you want from me. You're still taking care of me and trying to keep me out of as much trouble <laughs> as possible besides the stuff that I always seem to find myself in. God, I will never understand how much you care about me. Ever. But I am in awe of it. And I am very thankful. Very thankful for it. In your son's name we pray. Amen.